I'm Cara Mae Melton with Care Conscious, and today I'm sitting here with Dr. Ann Glass from the Institute of Gerontology, UGA. Dr. Glass is going to tell us about in-home care professionals. Um, Dr. Glass, at some point, family caregivers may have to hire in help. What are the things that they really need to consider? Well, first of all, I'd like to encourage you to just do it. Um, what we see is caregivers are often, they delay asking for help. Okay. They think they can do it all themselves. Not and our caregivers. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, if you're watching this, you are aware that you, you need some support and some help. And hiring an aide may be just the thing you need to do. Um, there are a couple distinctions that we might talk about. One is you can hire an aide through an agency or not an agency. And the difference being you could pay a bit more if you hire through an agency. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is that they do provide a level of screening, background okay. checks, those kind of things, and, and probably some extra training versus hiring somebody that you hear about maybe through a lady at church or something. Okay. Um, those folks may be perfectly fine, but you, you just don't have that same background information on them necessarily. Um, another distinction is between a home health care aide and a personal care or home care aide, and I know that gets that confusing. The same, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to look at it pretty carefully. The home health care aide is what's available to you if you meet Medicare skilled care needs. And we need to stress that point that Medicare will not cover long term care except under very limited circumstances. Can you just say that again? Yeah. Please? Medicare <laughs> does not cover long term care except under very particular circumstances and for limited times. Okay. And if you are getting skilled care through Medicare, then you can have a home health care aide come to your home. Okay. These people typically have like 75 hours of training minimum and they have passed a competency test or been certified. Mm -hmm. um, whereas a personal care or home care aide, typically their training varies from state to state, what's, what's required for them. And um, they're not even necessarily high school graduates. That's not even really? a qualification. Yeah. Okay, so the burden really falls to the family caregiver to vet the, the professional that they're bringing in. Yeah, and that's the difference too. If you're hiring through the agency, the agency is gonna be the ones who choose the aid and send the aid. But there are programs now where you, as the family member or the client, mm -hmm is the one who picks and chooses and hires and fires. So. Okay. And what type of duties do they perform typically? Um, in either case, those aides are going to be coming in to help with your basic activities of daily living like bathing and dressing, getting you up out of bed in the morning or putting you to bed at night. They might also help with light housekeeping or fixing lunch in the middle of the day for you, that kind of thing. Okay. And our family caregivers probably have heard the term ADL and that's exactly what that means, right? right. Activities of exactly. daily living. Yeah. And what are the typical costs that are, would be associated with bringing somebody into the home like that? Well, again, if you have Medicare coverage, that will take care of mm -hmm. those costs. But what most people are really going to end up with is the personal care aid for the longer term. And that you pay for out of your pocket. It could be in the neighborhood of 18 to $20 an hour, perhaps. Okay. Um, or it may be less depending on if you're negotiating with someone you know. Mm -hmm. But something people may not realize is that Medicaid, which is, uh, it varies from state to state, but Medicaid is increasingly using some of their long-term care dollars to support home and community-based care. Really? So that means they will, in some cases, mm -hmm. pay for an aide to come into the house for you. That's great. Where can family caregivers go to find out more information about that? Uh, perhaps the Area Agency on Aging would be a good place to start. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much. It seems that uh, there's a lot to think about when you're thinking about bringing uh, somebody into your home to help care for your loved one or into their home. So it, it really sounds like it's important for family caregivers to be proactive. Right. <laughs> start ahead of time. Absolutely. Great. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. And thanks for watching.